The Modify API Response Rule allows you to modify the response body of an HTTP request. This rule is crucial for both developers and testers. We'll explore various use cases of Modify API Response Rules, starting with how to create one. You can initiate the creation of a rule directly from the home page or navigate to the HTTP rules window and click Create New Rule. There are various types of rules designed for specific use cases. Let's choose the Modify API Response Rule and hit the Create Rule button. This page allows you to configure the Modify Response Rule. You can give your rule any descriptive name. We'll keep it default for now. First, select the resource type. You can select from REST API or GraphQL API, as Requestly supports both. The HTML, CSS, or JS option is only available on the desktop version due to browser limitations. Let's select REST API for now. We'll explore GraphQL later in this video. The source condition is where the matching criteria are set. Whichever network request matches this condition will have this response modification rule applied to that particular API's response. The response status code enables the overriding of the original response code of the request. If defined, this new code will be returned instead of the original status code. If left empty, the original code will be returned. The response body can be either static or dynamic. In the case of static, Data entered in the box will be returned without modification. For dynamic responses, a response can be generated using components from the request and the original response, such as method, URL, response, response type, request headers, request data, and response JSON. The response comes as a string, while response JSON comes in JSON format. Let's cover a few use cases by fiddling with the search suggestions API of Amazon.com. First, let's open Amazon.com and then open the Inspect panel, focusing on the Network tab. Use the filter to fetch XHR requests and search for milk. As we can observe, there are a few API calls related to suggestion. Now, let's refine our search and filter specifically for milk. This is the API call we're interested in. Let's set it as a source condition and name this rule Amazon Search Suggestion. For now, we'll maintain the status code to original. One option is to use a static response with static data by inserting some JSON. We could copy the JSON from here, paste it into the rule, and make required modifications. Moreover, we have the option to alter the response using dynamic JavaScript. For this demonstration, let's proceed with dynamic modification. I'll just copy-paste a small code snippet. It looks for the first suggestion, appends the number of suggestions in it, and includes the URL of API. Now let's save the changes. After saving, we'll see if it is working correctly. You'll notice that the output is showing 10, that's the number of suggestions, along with the API endpoint. Next, let's simulate an error scenario. We'll change the status code to 400, indicating a bad request. After saving the changes and attempting to modify, you'll see it's not changing anything. It's not working because we've introduced an error. Let's reload and search for iPhone. There's no response. API is still receiving suggestions for iPhone. However, the results aren't displaying here because our rule is actively modifying the outcome. The Amazon search suggestion function is in operation. So, this demonstrates how we can modify a response to simulate different error scenarios. We can activate or deactivate these rules from here, or even from within the rule config screen itself. Now, let's consider another use case. This time we will modify GraphQL API response. The medium.com uses GraphQL to load different parts of its web page. Let's open the Network tab and filter the traffic. Upon reloading, you'll notice there are multiple APIs named GraphQL, showing that Medium.com has named their API simply GraphQL. 
Let's filter these out and examine the payload they send. Here, we can see that the operation names are visitor query and unread notification, indicating different types of operations for various sections of the page. Now, let's focus on operation named as right sidebar query. It appears to be delivering information on tags like data science and self-improvement. Let's try to modify this by creating a new modify API response. We shall select the GraphQL API and name it medium.com sidebar change. Next, we'll use this request URL as our source condition. Now let's dive into the payload. In our example, the payload is contained within an array denoted by square brackets, starting with index zero. So what we'll do is reference it as zero dot operation name. And in place of the value, we'll copy and paste right sidebar query. This will ensure an exact match with this particular request. For the response body, we can take it from original response. For now, let's work with static data. We'll keep the status code as it is. Now, let's try to modify the term data science to something else. We'll rename it to requestly and save this rule. Now, if I update this and reload the page, you'll notice the first item is listed as requestly. However, it will still direct us to the original data science page because the ID hasn't been changed. Okay, let's try to change the ID instead of the data science. Let's just call it requestly, save the rule, and refresh the page. Now, if we open requestly in new tab, you'll see it's actually loading the requestly page. Let's attempt to modify the display title by passing a really long string. Let's observe how medium.com handles this type of strings. So, they are not handling this at the front end. I'm sure they have some back-end logic that prevents lengthy strings from appearing on the front end. That concludes the demonstration of the modify a PI response rule. Try using the desktop app to work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files as well. Don't forget to share how you are integrating this tool into your workflows. We love hearing your stories.